Hello, we are finally on the PCT, taking our first steps at Hearts Pass. It was about an hour drive from the lion's den on what started off as a nice road and then turned into a really bumpy, pretty sketchy dirt road, but beautiful. Um, kind of just dropped off to the side for a lot of points and we were going pretty fast and there were nine of us in the back seat. Um, but at one point, my uh, backpack that was strapped to the roof started slipping off the side, so we had to come to a stop. I got my trowel on the road, um, but I think I lost my toilet paper already. But it's okay, we got to the trailhead, got all of our gear situated. My trekking poles were being fidgety, but we figured that out. And uh, yeah, now we're just walking, finally setting foot on the PCT. Day one and a couple miles in, and we've already seen, well, on the drive up we saw a mountain goat, or I saw his big butt, he was like digging a hole on the side of the trail. And since we've been hiking, we've seen a bunch of little marmot, like rodent weasel dudes. Like I see one right now. And we've seen like grouse chicks flooding by and then the mom squawking around and a little chipmunk it's amazing look at this <laughs> you can see hikers out in the distance as you walk the trail is absolutely cruisy having a good time So this is for anybody that doesn't already know who I am. Hey, my name's Sarah. I am on day one of hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. And this is something that I've been planning since 2020. It's currently 2023, going southbound. Uh, today's my 30th birthday. Kind of a cool way to kick off my 30s. Right before we left the lion's den this morning to catch the ride to Hearts Pass, um, I had some Wi-Fi signal and I saw a lot of really sweet messages from friends and family wishing me a happy birthday, wishing me luck on the trail. So I'm really having just an amazing day, feeling lots of love from all those people excited about the people that I've already been meeting and honestly just really proud of myself for being here after planning it for so long and arranging my life in order to get here. Um, it took a lot of logistics and planning and just stick-to-itiveness 
um, quit my job, ended the lease on my apartment, and I don't have anywhere else lined up right now. Um, yeah, and everything is entirely open-ended for the end of this hike. So, yeah. I am just feeling extremely free and blown away by, by where I freaking am right now. <laughs> Thing I find kind of funny or that I wasn't exactly expecting is that a lot of the people or most of the people that we've met so far I would guess are probably close to their 30s or older as well and I think a lot of the time you hear that hikers are young like in their 20s and that 30s is more of the minority or you know older is the minority but so far that doesn't seem to be the case unless I'm just judging people's ages wrong um, but it's kind of kind of cool to see that a lot of people just at a time in their life where you wouldn't expect them to be free enough to you know run away and do a trail like this that they're out here doing it Joe's saying that one of his guesses for the reason why that could be is because of the new permit system this year where you had to register in advance in order to get a time slot to apply for a permit which either you know there could be a lot of people that wanted to do the hike that were up to speed on that new process and just you know didn't get the permit <laughs> or I could say something about the age as well maybe you know actually I'm not going to say that I don't think that's true that I was about to say maybe younger people aren't as uh, big of planners, but I don't think that's true. So, who knows? Who knows? The shade is exponentially cooler. And the sun. It's crazy. You walk into the shade and it's just like... <sighs> and then you go into the sun and it's like... Oh. We've stopped for lunch and kind of learned a hard lesson that it's probably not a good idea to put chocolate in the bear can at the top of the backpack in the roasting sun because these are all squishy and melted. These once, <laughs> these were once Trader Joe's peanut butter cups. This is gold here. Now I'm just going to fish the papers out and drink it. <laughs> First half of the day was easy going, but now we're encountering a lot of blowdowns, which basically just means trees like, like laying around the trail or across the trail that makes it harder to pass. Kind of have to find an easier spot and just climb over. Not too bad, it just slows you down. Something really interesting about the hike this year for Sobos is that half the people, probably more than half the people that we're meeting, 
are what we're calling snowbows this year. So they're people who were nobos, meaning northbound hiking from Mexico to Canada, who had to kind of stop at a certain point in that direction and jump ahead um, to go around snow. So there's a lot of those people who jumped up to Washington and are gonna go southbound for a while with us. Um, there, yeah, there's actually a lot of people like that um, that we met at the Lion's Den. Now that we're on the trail itself, we're seeing some more true Sobos. But yeah, a lot of them are Nobos, or sorry, yeah, Nobos who turned Snowbo. Um, and as a Sobo just starting out, it's kind of an interesting dynamic because you're meeting people who have already been out here for, you know, a month, 700, 800 miles, however long that is, 60 days, two months. Um, you know, so we're, so we're showing up all fresh and new and excited, ready to start this adventure, eager to meet people, excited about the trail and just like, you know, giddy about it. And the vibe from some of the Sobos is more like, you know, mellow. Thought we could do a segment called, which trail names have we heard so far? Most of these people we've met at like Trail Angels houses. Um, anyway, so there's there's Blaze, Nix, Snotfish, <laughs> Splinter, Lightweight, Side Quest, Lion and Raven. Mm. Happy Six. Yeah. 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 There's a bird out here that sounds like a fire alarm. Hear it? It's like the start of a fire alarm. We felt a few raindrops. And earlier we were hearing some rumbling of thunder. So kind of just waiting to see what happens. There's a lot of these little guys at camp. Little like yellow and black bee flies. They're everywhere. Maybe that's actually a bee. I don't know. We ended up doing about 16 miles today. So now we're eating some food while we are eaten by mosquitoes. <laughs> it's actually not that bad for show. Sure. We set up our tent at this lovely spot with this lovely view. There's a little stream right over that little hump. So maybe we'll refill our waters in the morning or tonight. Uh, but we're going to call it an early night and recover our bodies for the next day. Me again. I figured I'd do some lessons learned for the day. Lesson number one. Just, if you have the option, bring your backpack inside the car and not have it strapped on top of the car because it could just fall off like it, like mine did. Lesson number two. Back flush your Sawyer squeeze before starting a hiking trip so that you have water flow easily. 
Also wear sunscreen on the back of your legs because I got a little sunburnt. And I feel like I had another. I mean, I guess we were debating whether to go, you know, do a 20 mile day or just stop at 15, 16 miles. And our brains and whatever, we were eager to do the 20, but we're heeding advice and just stopping early so that we can recover and do bigger miles in the upcoming days. I'll come back if I think of more. That's right, the other lesson which I mentioned earlier, was don't put your chocolate in a bear can on the top of your pack on a sunny, exposed hike because beautiful little Trader Joe's peanut butter cups will turn into this. <laughs> These are hard now, but before they were super squishy. And Joe's Snickers and Kit Kats were all mush as well. Lessons of the day.